Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mina and this is going to be the second part of my rereading favorite books, reading vlogs, series, I guess. Um, in my last vlog that I just recently uploaded, I reread one of my favorite books of all time, which is Dark Matter. And I said at the end of that vlog that I wanted to continue with another favorite book. And I decided to go with Recursion, which is also by Blake Crouch. So this one came out, I believe it was 2018. It was the book that came after Dark Matter and I also rated it a five stars when I read it the first time. So I'm interested to see how that goes. If I read it the second time, will I also think it's a five star read? And yeah, I didn't really start this one. I read like the first 15 pages yesterday. So I don't really have anything to update you guys with. It's also really early right now. It's like five minutes to 10 o'clock and I have to work. So I don't really have time to do an update right now, but hopefully after work, I can get some reading in and talk to you guys about what this is about and what my initial rereading thoughts are. It's also the last day of the work week because tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so today should be hopefully a little bit easier than regular days, but I will check in with you guys later after I've read a more significant amount of this and I will talk to you then. Literally me on Zoom before my students get into the meeting. Hey. Okay, you guys, it's a lot later in the day. I finished work and I picked myself up some Wendy's again. I normally don't eat a lot of fast food, I swear. But we need to go grocery shopping and I don't have anything in the house. So this is what I'm eating. And I got chicken nuggets. So I thought I would come here and kind of like update you guys with what I've read so far. I am up to page 50 now in recursion, and I figured we can just have our lunch together if you are eating right now. Why don't you pause the video and go get something to eat so that we're eating together? Is that corny? Oh well. I also, of course, got my cold brew, but they put it in this weird like double cup. I don't know why. Maybe it's just like extra protection but I'm gonna eat that after my food. So, I'm 50 pages into recursion and I love this book. I feel like it's just as intriguing as and powerful as Dark Matter was. And they have very similar subject matters. They're both science fiction, they're both thrillers, and they both deal with, I don't wanna say alternate realities because that's not really what recursion is about. In the synopsis, it basically explains that there is this sickness going around called false memory syndrome. Oh my God, can this guy like not park here? And basically what that means is that people who have it will experience these memories of a life that they never lived before and it'll be like competing memories between their real memories and these false memories that they have. And this book takes place in two time periods, 2018 and 2007, and there are two different perspectives. There is this detective named Barry Sutton, and he is, he is investigating the murder of a woman who committed suicide after having this false memory syndrome. She basically could not stand the fact that she was living or experiencing these false memories and nobody around her like knew what she was talking about like she had a husband in these false memories and a son and when she went to go speak to her husband he was like what are you talking about we were never married like who are you so she basically ended her life because she couldn't deal with that situation and he's kind of investigating that and he also feels like he might be falling victim to that syndrome as well and the other time period in 2007 and the other perspective is a woman named Helena and she is a scientist and she is trying to find a cure or discover a cure for Alzheimer's it's not really a cure but it's basically something that will help people who have Alzheimer's where she records people's memories so that they can recall them later on in their life when they do have the disease. I'm not going to say any more about the plot, but those two stories do kind of intersect later on in the novel. And 
it just gets really interesting and again really twisty and really suspenseful i just wanted to show you guys my cold brew it doesn't look very light today which is kind of giving me like no hope it actually tastes pretty good even though it's not very light i might just add some more like cream at home but anyway i feel awkward like talking and eating at the same time even though mukbangers do this and i'm like how do they feel comfortable doing this Let me finish eating and then I'll come back and talk a little bit more because I'm uncomfortable talking to you guys with a mouthful of food. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back you guys, I finished eating. So, a little bit of thoughts because I don't want this to be a super long clip, but I don't want to give any more away in terms of the plot. I actually don't remember too much of like the plot points of this book, so I can't really even give you more. I feel like my description was very vague and unclear, but... Um, I remember loving it and one thing that I really like about this book is the vibe feels almost like a film noir type of vibe especially with the detectives perspective I don't know why I'm getting that vibe it takes place in New York and it's like late fall to early winter and the weather is like gloomy and it just gives me that type of film noir vibe I don't know and I also just really love the fact that this book also deals with that theme of obsession and being so consumed by your project and your work that it literally takes over your whole life and consumes you. And so far I'm seeing that with the detective's perspective, he's like desperately trying to find out what is going on with this false memory syndrome. And then with Helena, I keep wanting to say Helena, Helena being super obsessed with her science project, science project, as if it's like a school science project, her scientific discovery to basically preserve people's memories. And in her perspective, I forgot to mention that she is hired by this very big corporation and this really rich entrepreneur tech guy who is basically going to pay her, well not her, but he's going to pay millions and billions of dollars to help fund her project. So she's kind of like on a secluded island working with that entrepreneur guy and a team of other scientists and employees and they're trying to make this discovery happen. That's what this book is about <laughs> so far. So I'm just going to stop here because I don't really have anything else to say other than I love it still and I am going to go home now I've just been like sitting in the parking lot eating my food and drinking my Starbucks and I really just like don't even want to drive I'm so lazy right now even though I'm like five minutes away from home but I'm gonna go do that I'm gonna read I have to do some grading and I will catch in with you guys later Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Yoda is about to knock over my camera stand. Yoda, no. Come here. He's just like sniffing it. So I just wanted to come on here and update you guys. I didn't really get much reading. Yoda? You okay, baby? I didn't get much reading done since I last updated you guys, which is sad, <laughs> but I'm about 75 pages into recursion and I kind of wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about the plot because I felt like Yesterday's explanation was Not very clear and kind of vague But there are a bunch of things that I forgot that were going on in this book that I'm 
realizing now that I'm rereading it. And I remember the first time that I read this book, I was super confused for like a good portion of this book, maybe like 80% of it. I didn't know what the hell was going on. But again, because I had read it already, I'm now understanding things more earlier on, which is nice. So I do think that this is the type of book like Dark Matter, which is really conducive to multiple reads. That being said, I am gonna get into some like spoilerish content, spoilerish territory. So be warned going forward that this may contain spoilers. You could just skip to the next clip if you don't wanna be spoiled. So basically, as I mentioned yesterday, that idea of this false memory syndrome is actually a lot darker than we anticipated. It's not really a disease. It's more so something that is altered and controlled by people. And at this point in the book, we don't know who is involved in this plot to change people's memories and um, alter the past, because that's kind of what they're doing, essentially. If you are changing somebody's memories, you are pretty much changing the past and the chain of events that happen afterwards. So I, of course, having read this, know that the people involved are the people who are working with Helena on the Alzheimer's project and they're the ones that are behind this memory altering phenomenon which people are thinking is false memory syndrome but false memory syndrome isn't a real thing it's basically people who want a do-over in life going to get their memories altered and changing the course of reality so that they can live the life that they always wanted or they can Kind of go back and change things that they regret so it's a lot more complex than what meets the eye of course not everybody is privy to this information so that's why this concept of false memory syndrome is like the theory people think it's a disease but it's really just people seeking out a way to alter their memories and it's just so good <laughs> this book is just so freaking good i mentioned yesterday that this has a film noir type vibe and I definitely still see it and I feel like it's even more prominent from the 25 pages that I have just read. So I'm going to try to read more today. I don't know how much I'm going to get done. We have plans to go to my parents' house for a social distancing Thanksgiving. It's really just going to be like um, my parents and brother and sister who live there and then me and my husband going over to eat. But we will be eating in a separate room so it's COVID safe and I do have to make mac and cheese before we go and I'm pretty sure that's it for today like there's really nothing else for us to do so maybe I can get some reading in before we go or when we come back but I will update you guys later and like I said I hope everybody is having a wonderful Thanksgiving today even though this is going to come out later than Thanksgiving but yeah okay bye guys <laughs> mm. Here is my Thanksgiving OOTD. Just ignore the fact that there's no bed sheets on the bed. I'm um, getting them washed, so that's why. But yep, we're heading over to my parents' house really soon. I don't know if I'm going to film anything there, but I will check in with you guys later. friends i have a confession to make it's been a week since i've filmed on this vlog it is now the next thursday because the last clip that i filmed was on thanksgiving which was last thursday a week ago but i'm here to give you guys my final thoughts of my reread of recursion and end this vlog once and for all i do think that my like momentum of the reread really only lasted for dark matter i do love recursion and i still think that it's one of my favorite books of all time but i'm not the type of person that typically does rereads and i think i'm noticing or i'm sensing that i can probably only handle 
like one reread at a time and not like back to back because I am the type of person that is always like looking for something new to read and wanting to read new books that I have. So when I was reading Recursion, I kind of fell into a little, I wouldn't say slump, but I was just more motivated to read other things. Not that I did because I was reading Recursion, but that's like what I wanted to do. And so I think it took me a little bit longer to get through Recursion because of that fact. That being said, I still absolutely love this book and I think that I definitely enjoyed it more the first time around and I was very very hyped for this book because of how much I loved Dark Matter. So I can see why my first time experience reading this was a little bit more enjoyable and surprising and um, hype, but I did definitely enjoy it the second time as well. One thing that I love about this book compared to Dark Matter, and they're both excellent and unique in their own ways, but I feel like Recursion is scary because it's very global and the issues that are present in this book affect literally like everybody in the world and this idea of changing memory and changing the past, like I said before, leads to a different chain of events in pretty much everyone's life because one small little change could snowball into a bunch of other different changes. So I think that that is something that is very scary in this book is that time travel, time travel, if you could think of this as time travel, is not a, is not an individual um, phenomenon, right? It's something that truly impacts and affects us all. So that's what I really enjoyed about this. I also... I think that something that's different between this and Dark Matter is that in terms of like point of view and characters, we really are getting like two perspectives here, Barry and Helena, and it kind of shifts like we start off thinking that Barry is our main character and then as the book continues we really learn that Helena is more so the main character, at least in my opinion, I feel like there's more of her perspective and we're following her life more than we are Barry's. So we've got dual perspectives in here versus Dark Matter that really only focuses on Jason's life and his choices and his experiences. So that book is much more individual and much more personal than Recursion, which like I said, is more global and has multiple perspectives. I don't know if my thoughts are very clear, but I just kind of wanted to note the differences here because I think that some people read Recursion and they're a little bit disappointed because either they think that it's too similar to Dark Matter, like the theme, themes in this book, or they think that it's too different and they're wishing that this was more like Dark Matter. And I just want to, like in my opinion, I appreciate both books for what they are separately and their similarities and like I said before I would pick up anything that Blake Crouch writes from now on and I love his sci-fi concepts and I think that he has like a really fast-paced way of explaining things and a really beautiful way of tying in other existential issues within his sci-fi narratives so I appreciate that about Blake Crouch um, I think I would give this on the second read like a 4.75, like almost a 5 stars. I guess I would just say that I enjoyed the experience reading it the first time around. It's definitely a 5 star read and it was a 5 star read the first time around, but in terms of second readings, I would give it a 4.75 because it did take me a little bit longer and I did find myself wanting to read other things even though I was tied to this reread but I still love it. So please do check this book out regardless of the fact that it's more enjoyable the first time. <laughs> okay, so those are my thoughts of Recursion. I did want to come on and also quickly show you the two books that I just got in the mail two days ago. Both of these were Black Friday purchases from Amazon and they came in in literally a day. Like I ordered them on Monday and they came on Tuesday. 
One of them is Skipping Christmas by John Grisham. And this is going to be my next read. I'm so excited. I'm probably going to, going to start reading this tomorrow. It's very, very short. This is the book that inspired the movie Christmas with the Cranks. And Christmas with the Cranks is one of my all-time favorite holiday movies. So this is super exciting. I also picked up... This lighting is... Whoa. I also picked up One by One by Ruth Ware, and this is more of a murder mystery, Agatha Christie style uh, thriller involving a company that goes on a ski trip, and I think one of them is a killer. But I heard mixed things about this book. I hear that it's boring, I hear that it deals a lot with the company's problems and the tensions and dynamics between the employees and it's a little bit slow but i'm hoping that i enjoy this i can't believe like the lighting right now is just being ridiculous i apologize but i'm hoping i enjoy this one and i think this is going to be the book that i pick up after skipping christmas and i have two more books coming in the mail hopefully soon from book outlet so yeah that's it for this vlog i've been wanting to finish this forever but i was waiting um, until now to give you my final thoughts on recursion. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video. I hope everybody has a really great day. Bye guys!